Okay, today we're going to replace a, a diaphragm, a very common model that you'll see uh, out there. This one is labeled Yamaha. It's actually made by uh, Eminence, uh, builds this model for Yamaha, and you'll see this uh, out there quite frequently. If you notice on the side of the uh, driver uh, that we're going to replace the diaphragm on here, that we have uh, some model number information and some manufacturing code information here, uh, followed by the impedance uh, of the required uh, diaphragm replacement here, which in this case is 8 ohms. They are available uh, in 16 ohms as well. Uh, our diaphragm replacement uh, D101 8 ohm or D101 16 ohm. And these are very straightforward to replace. Um, the other types of drivers that you'll see uh, on these, or the other type of configuration would be uh, a bolt-on driver, which has the mounting bolts for the horn lens here. As you can see, several different configurations depending on the type of horn. Um, or the thread-on style, which we're working on today, which simply screws into the horn lens. Uh, all of these units require the same diaphragm. Uh, you may see them listed under the brands uh, Community, Carvin, Sun, uh, Yamaha, as is the case here, uh, Soundtech, uh, Yorkville, uh, or Crate, and there's several others as well. Very, very common part, and uh, in this case, it's a very simple installation. We start with a Phillips head screwdriver. You'll notice here, before we remove the old diaphragm, that we have a positive connection already marked on the diaphragm here and that there's a little round uh, hole in the top plate of the magnet structure here to indicate where the terminal goes. Okay, So that's very easy to remember. If you pay attention to that you won't have any issues installing the new part. So the first thing we'll do here is to simply remove the three screws for the old diaphragm. We'll set those aside as of course we'll reuse those to mount the new parts and they're fairly easy to remove these out one by one, set these aside like this, and at this point the diaphragm simply lifts out of place as you can see here, and this one has a lot of damage to it. Uh, windings of the diaphragm have been overheated and have come apart. Uh, pretty much all of the windings uh, have overheated and come off of the former of the diaphragm which is here. And You'll notice this is an old style uh, what Eminence calls a type 1 diaphragm which has a simple kind of a groove in the suspension of the diaphragm geometry right here. Uh, the new style looks a little different and we'll show you that um, when we get to that point. <coughs> the diaphragm of course is not reusable in any way so we'll set that aside. That'll be discarded and you'll notice if you look inside the magnet gap here what's left of the copper voice coil wires uh, or windings are stuck down in the magnet gap here and that's a common issue that we run into on these when they've been overpowered and uh, separated on the voice coil like that. So what we'll want to do is, is see first if we can remove uh, most of this by hand and as, as you can see here it was very easy. Uh, we were lucky in this case that all of that simply just came out in one piece uh, from the magnet gap and that of course is, uh, is garbage as well. So we'll throw that out and we want to take a look and see if there's any remnants in the magnet gap here and it looks pretty clean as you can see here uh, with the close-up that uh, everything looks to be in good order there's no other burnt wires or, or particles hanging down in the voice coil gap there but for good measure as usual we'll go ahead and clean the magnet gap piece of sticky tape uh, sticky side out on a business card works great just run that around a couple of times here like this just kind of spin the dive or the magnet assembly around with the tape folded sticky side out and you'll see that we are picking up uh, some dirt particles there so we'll go ahead and give it a second run with a clean piece of tape from the other side of the tape there just to be extra sure that everything is clean and ready to go. Okay, so that should take care of that and we're clean so we're good to go on that <coughs> to install the new diaphragm. Next thing you'll want to notice on the new diaphragm packaging is of course standard deal here nothing nothing special but when you take out the new diaphragm You'll notice it says Eminence on it, and that's okay. doesn't matter what brand you're replacing. They're all the same, made by Eminence, so that's what the diaphragm will say on it when you replace it. Um, there's a piece of tape here that they put in the packaging to prevent any type of vacuum buildup during transit between the back plate or the air chamber uh, of, the, of the diaphragm plate here and the front plate. So we'll want to remove that first. Usually just peels right out like that. That's garbage. So we're ready to go. You see the new diaphragm is already marked for the positive connection just like the old one. Very straightforward. And the difference from the old diaphragm 
in the new diaphragm, as you can see here, is the new one has more of a ribbed suspension uh, built into the uh, diaphragm assembly, and the old one was more of just kind of a, a V groove. This is what's called the Type 2 diaphragm. This is the, the what's used in all of these drivers now. A little better frequency response, a little stronger construction uh, with that molded uh, ribbed suspension. So that's what we're using uh, today. And the, the key here is to just make sure you line up the, the tabs with the hole at the bottom of the diaphragm or the magnet top plate here with the tabs here. That's the way that it goes on. There's kind of a molded groove in the top plate of the magnet here that centers the diaphragm automatically for you. So that part is very straightforward. Line up your screw holes and we'll replace the three screws uh, for this and we should be good to go. Snug the screws slightly at first. Have one, two, and three. And then we'll go back to the first screw, give it about a half a turn. Don't want to over tighten the diaphragm plate or the diaphragm screws and crack the uh, the plate there as it's made of, of a plastic. So, so we're good to go on this one here. As you can see, everything went together very nicely, very straightforward. Last thing we'll do, as usual, is uh, run a quick test on this to make sure that it sounds clean and we should be ready to go. Signal generator on this one set at 1000 hertz. Positive and negative connection done here and here. Turn the unit sideways so that we can hear and then we'll sweep this with our signal generator to make sure that everything sounds good. And that is it. We are perfect on that one. It is ready to reinstall into the cabinet. And you have replaced the diaphragm on the Eminence uh, driver. And you are all set.